My name is Vikan Balawanian. I'm a PMI authorized instructor. I do uh, train uh, so many project and program management courses. I'm a project management, program management, portfolio management consultant. I have several certification in project management, risk management, business analysis, uh, agile certified practitioner, scrum master, certified agile leader, and so on. So I help organizations in making their uh, uh, departments or organizations ready for agile, ready for this volatile and uncertain world where organization cannot traditionally plan everything and execute because the world is changing fast. So understanding agile mindset, a lot of organizations, they do agile without understanding agility. Agility comes with a way of thinking, with a mindset. And you cannot just uh, implement uh, uh, Agile uh, just by using a set of Agile tools or softwares or, uh, you know, techniques. You need your team, your organization, the entire organization to be transformed in the way they work, but more importantly, to be transformed in the way they think about Agile. And then when they think about Agile in the correct Agile way, then they can actually implement or do Agile. So this is our today agenda. We're going to talk about uh, agility, why agility works. Agility does not work everywhere. There are specific conditions where agility works. You cannot apply agile in all industries, in all organizations. So we're going to touch up on that. How agility is shaping top companies around the world. We have to understand that agility started in the IT industry, but now organizations moreover are adapting the concept of agility outside the IT industry, outside the software development and implementing in other industries. So quick introduction about agility. It's a hype word. So whenever you go, wherever you go, uh, you hear that we need to be agile, we need to be adaptive, we need to be this, we need to be that. But what agility means? Agility could mean so many things for so many organizations. So let's, let's first put a, put a definition before we go to the mindset. Agility is a quality that many organizations want to achieve. Many service providers claim that they are agile and even offer to transform their clients to agile organizations. And many of these organizations eventually end up exercising, you know, uh, uh, agility that doesn't uh, bring fruitful results or does not change the organization. So if we're going to put it in a definition, Philip Crutchen, uh, puts it in this one sentence, the ability of an organization to react to changes in its environment faster than the rate of these changes. This definition for me summarizes uh, the concept of what is agility or why we need to be agile. Because our organizations, we work in an environment where this environment, the disregarding of the country, disregarding of the industry, disregarding of the type of business we do, the environment is ever changing, especially now with the uh, COVID, every organization felt that the pace of the changes were much faster than they could react. So when an organization is ready to react to this change, to these changes as faster than the change itself, then we can say that this organization is agile. The key point in this definition is that agility is a characteristic, is not a set of processes. It's not a set of tools. It's not a set of technique, but it's an attitude. It's a mindset. It's a characteristic that individuals in an organization will have, and eventually the organization itself has. To decide if we are achieving results by being agile, rather than just following some processes and, and do agile. Uh, so agility is not something new. I don't want to go back to the history, but agility started way back in 1930s and 40s in different industries, in different organizations, where they tried to adopt ways. They didn't used to call it agile back then, but they tried to adopt ways where they used to be adaptive and handle changes. And eventually in 1990s and 2000, you know, we started calling it agile. So agility eventually got the hype in the software industry. In early 1990s, Silicon Oasis, most software organizations were adapting a faster way of delivering results and accordingly implementing uh, uh, agile. Uh, so um, 
that was in 1990s, early 2000s. For the past uh, 30, 40 years, agility was there, but specifically in the software and IT industry. Okay. Uh, when it came recently for the past five to 10 years, other organizations realized there are so many changes. The technology is ever fast changing. The organization's environment are ever fast changing. We need better ways of managing our organizations. So this concept, which was developed primarily for the software development industry, other businesses picked it up and started saying, can we apply this outside of the software? Can we do this in customer service? Can we do this in marketing? Can we do this in R&D? Can we do this in sales? Can we, can we, can we? And try to implement in a way or another. Based on a survey, you know, uh, 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 which is, uh, which they, they regularly do. A lot of organization, they say, we, whenever I go to organization, I ask them, do you, do you know what's agile? We're like, yeah, somewhere, somehow we have implemented agility. So agility is not new to a lot of organizations, but the question is, is agility being applied in the right way? And what I find based on my expertise is that most organizations apply or do agile without having the mindset of agile. Uh, Benjamin is asking, you said that agile cannot work in every industry. If I understood correctly, in what industry wouldn't agile work? I see agile as delivering value while interacting with others. All right, thank you, Benjamin. To answer that question, let's go to this slide. Agility has favorable conditions. In order for agility to be better than the traditional way of working, which is, you know, planning, which is, you know, doing the traditional way of work, the traditional management, you know, traditional way of, you know, commercial interactions, agility has a favorable conditions. It's not about industry, Benjamin. Some industries, you can, you can see that, oh, agility works well in it, but other industries doesn't work well. But I don't want to link it to an industry. I want to link it to some conditions. What are the favorable conditions for agility? When it comes to market conditions, if market conditions are stable and predictable, you don't need agility. Because why you need a mechanism where can adapt to changes where changes are not even there. So if the market condition, the market environment, the market, the economy, the politics, the laws, compliance, regulations, technology, if all of these in the specific industry or country or location or business you're working with, the environment, these what we call pastel uh, conditions, political, economical, social, technological, legal, and environmental, if it changes a lot, then agility becomes favorable because you need a mechanism as an organization to be able to react to changes rather than you know to try to predict because predicting unstable environments or you know uh, changing environments is difficult to predict even if you do the best forecasting possible now what about customer involvement uh, you said as long as you know delivering value while interacting with each other yes Another condition is in order for Agile to work, you need close collaboration with your client. You need close collaboration because Agility works in a sprint, which could be one week, could be two weeks, could be three weeks, could be four weeks. And in order for you to understand what the client wants and deliver in a short period of time, you need the client to help you in that by working with you collaboratively in order to give you the feedback as fast as possible for you to do the amendments as fast as possible. If the customer requirements are clear and if those customer requirements will remain stable, they will not change. Then you don't need to go to a, a, an agile environment. So if the customer is building a building or a tower and the, 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 the building design or the infrastructure or you know what we end up building will not change or the rate of change will be very minute, could be a color or a small. Then the question is, does agility helps? Should we go to the traditional way of planning and executing a project rather than Asia? Because the conditions are unfavorable. The requirements are stable. The environment and the conditions are stable. You know, so you know, the traditional way of what we call the waterfall or what we call the uh, predictive project management could be favorable in this condition. 
What about innovation times? If the project that you're doing has a lot of problems, the problems are complex, the solutions are unknown, the scope is not really clear or defined, then agility works better. However, if the work is pretty known, everybody knows what they need to do. They can predict three months later, six months later, three years later, exactly what tasks will happen. They can plan, they can forecast, they can schedule, then agility becomes nor, not a use than traditional you know, uh, modularity. Incremental development, okay? Incremental development is a concept in agility, like you develop a part and you put a part, that's modularity, like you build the software per modules. But if your project is in a way that there is no modularity, you cannot build in smaller chunks, you need to either build the complete thing or it doesn't give you any value, then agility doesn't also help you because creating those or developing these small chunks, there is no value unless you complete everything else then agility does not help. So all of these are conditions where you may decide if agility is favorable or not. This is based on a Harvard Business Review report in May 2016, Embracing Agile. Uh, make sense? Please, if anybody has any questions, feel free to type in the Q&A. So let's move on. So accordingly, Think of it this way. I characterize agility as the ability of an organization to navigate these ever-changing environment. If you take the dinosaurs, they were the biggest animals for years. They dominated the world and the animal kingdom for years, maybe millions of years. But when an asteroid came, they were the one that got hit and got distinct because all the smaller animals were able to go hide somewhere. They were agile. They were small enough to navigate and then they were small enough to survive the change that happened to the world. But the dinosaurs who were big and who were dominating the world, they couldn't. They went distinct. Similarly, forget about the dinosaurs, put it in an organization. Big organizations are the ones which are most impacted by a change in the environment. So if a change in an environment comes, smaller organizations with smaller teams of 5, 10, 20 employees, they easily navigate those changes. They change their policies, their procedures, their employees. They change the tools and techniques. It's, it's less costly. But an organization having 50, 60,000, 100,000 employees, 200 branches around the world, when a change comes, they cannot change a policy or a procedure or a way of working overnight. It, it takes them years to adapt. So in order not to take them years to adapt, if we build the organization based on an agile mindset, based on training our people what agility is, and based on putting new ways of working, then if a change comes, we will be more ready uh, uh, to adapt and navigate the change rather than to go out. And I think COVID is a best example in proving how organizations, they need to. Not, it's not an option anymore because so many organizations, they may went out of business. So many airlines are struggling. So many hotels are struggling. So many indices are changing the way of business because of the changes that happen. So that's, you know, uh, the example. Why Agile? Uh, one of the things you said, Benjamin, about Agile is the accelerated time to market. Okay, delivering value faster to the customer. Another reason why Agile, this is, this is by a study done in 2011, State of Agile Development, um, uh, published in 2011, where they asked, more than uh, 2,000 companies about if you adopt Agile, why you, why you decided to adopt Agile? So majority of the customers, the number one reason why they adopted Agile was accelerated time to market. Second reason was managing changing priorities. Third reason why agility gives you increased productivity. Uh, if, we, if we need to understand each of these points, uh, we need a lot of time to discuss. Uh, it's not uh, the purpose of this 
uh, 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 lecture, uh, better aligning IT with business because of the collaboration of uh, the customer and uh, uh, the IT department or uh, the project management, better quality, better visibility, less risk, simplified process. Agility has, is, is a lightweight process compared to other traditional project management, less risk, less cost, improved team morale, and so on. So you can see the benefits of agility. Now, now organizations have to decide, do I need to stick to the traditional ways of working, traditional ways of micromanagement, you know, and leading my teams in a more micromanagement way, or shall I go into a more agile type of management, leadership, virtual environment? You know, we don't have to be all in all office, same office. We can, you know, traditional versus modern. And we had to. We used to train this for the last 10 years, but companies wouldn't listen. Now, COVID happened and everybody's like, nah, we need to be agile. So, uh, uh, Mackenzie, if I, if I uh, jump into the next slide, Mackenzie says, Mackenzie is one of the uh, big four organizations when it comes to uh, consultancy and helping organizations implement, you know, better way of working. They say in order for an organization to be agile, we need to focus on leadership and management, how we manage our people, how we manage our processes. Uh, organizational structure, the, the hierarchy of organization structure, decision-making governance, culture and the people, our culture, the people, our engagement, the way of working, and governance and processes. So they summarize it with this uh, five facets, okay? Which in order, if we want to transition our organization into an agile organization, then we need to focus on these five areas. Um, and this is, this is where we start establishing a mindset of agility, which is not simply just tools and techniques, which is just simply bring a tool or bring a software that makes an organization agile. We start with the people, okay? Well, actually the core is the strategy where the strategy should be that we're gonna you know, change the way of working. But if we focus on the people, in the people we have leadership. Now we need to train people in a different way. We need to train people uh, uh, rather than to direct, rather than to manage their superiors and uh, subordinates, we need to train people to become coaches. That's why in Agile, uh, we don't call the agile project manager project manager. He's not a manager. He's an agile coach. Why do we call him a coach? Because he doesn't manage people. Teams are self-managed in agile. Uh, and that's something which is part of the mindset. I was with a customer yesterday, and he is saying that my employees, everybody is uh, showing what kind of work they are doing. So some people are putting two tasks, other people are taking a task and dividing it into 10 sub smaller tasks to show that I have done 12 things rather than two and I'm better than the other employee. What's missing here? The mindset in the employees. Agility is based on uh, three main pillars if you wanna uh, go that. Trust is one of the most important pillars, trust and transparency. Without the trust and transparency in agile teams, not the trust you know, uh, between the agile team and the customer, the trust within the team, the transparency within the team, then we cannot do agility. You need to become a coach and that's the mindset. And you're gonna hold your team accountable, not yourself. They should have shared accountability. In other words, the team should not come and tell you, I blame this, I blame that. The team itself, they understand that in agile projects, everybody is responsible for success and failure. If we fail, we cannot blame the project manager or the agile coach. Because the way we work in agile, we're one team, we're one hand. If somebody is not performing, everybody goes down. We're on one ship. And this is the job of the Agile project manager, which is called Agile coach. In order to create this culture or a mindset 
where everybody understands we have shared accountability towards our clients or towards our organization or towards success. The agile coach will inspire, will tell the team where we're going, but the team will pull up together and they will say, okay, we're the experts, we're the subject matter experts, we're the technical experts, we're going to navigate this. You as a coach, you protect us from disturbances, you give us the tools and the techniques we need to succeed, and we're going to drive this ship. So the agile coach uh, takes a back seat and guides the team rather than is on the neck of the team micromanaging every individual. Another concept of people is the talent management. Uh, and in, in agility still, uh, it's people still are getting to know agility. So when you want to hire individuals to be part of your agile teams, a lot of people who apply still, they don't know about Agile or never heard of Agile. So still the awareness of Agility or trainings of Agility or people certified in Agility is much, much less than the current demand. Another area to focus is the culture. Changing cultures in smaller organizations is easy, but changing cultures in a big, well-established organization, let's say in a university, you know, universities to change their culture, which is a university 70, 80, 100, 200 years, it's not as easy as a small startup company who started three years ago. They are easily, they can change the culture, they can move on, they can try, they can experiment, they can try new things, they can take risks compared to other more established, bigger organizations. And in order for this to succeed, we have to create silos of, let me not use the word silos. We have to create uh, uh, internal teams where we help each other. We create opportunities of learning and improvement. So if a problem happens with one Agile team, the way we do at the end of an Agile sprint, the sharing of the retrospectives and discussing about what worked, what did not work, and creating a kind of environment where we teach each other, where we help each other, where we support each other, rather than we're a team and you guys are a team, we don't belong to each other. This is the kind of a culture you need to create in agile environments in order to help the organization be transformed. If we go to the structure, another aspect of agile teams is the workforce size and location. The size and the location. Traditionally, we used to encourage co-location. And co-location was bringing everybody, putting everybody in the same location. Why? Better collaboration, better communication. Now, with the use of technology and online systems, agility encourages virtual environments. Okay? Now, we still encourage co-location, but with the ever-changing rules and regulations, our workforce size should be dynamic. Dynamic means we are able to grow quickly and reduce quickly. So organizations are looking to their contracts, how we do our contracts with employees. Because if I sign a three-year contract with a pilot of an airline, but COVID happens, and then I have 300 pilots sitting and getting salaries without playing, flying their planes, but contractually I cannot fire them, that's a big problem for the organization or get rid of them. So now organizations are going back and looking at about the structure, the workforce size, the location. Another thing is what they are, what are their roles and responsibilities? So if a pilot becomes useless because he's not flying a plane, then I shouldn't hire pilots who only know how to fly airplanes. Or I should hire pilots and maybe train them on something else. If in case we have certain changes in the environment, I could actually move people around in the organization. Now the pilot example maybe is a difficult example, but imagine an organization having 100 or 200 employees, each having a particular job position. If I can train certain employees to have a secondary role, a secondary responsibility, not as expert as their primary responsibility, but as a backup. In case I need to resize my teams, there is a demand in this area. I could move people from one department to another department because I have prepared 
employees. I have trained employees to have these secondary skills and it's easy for me to shuffle people around. Just like uh, in a football team or a basketball team, if every player plays in one position, the coach will have a very difficult situation because he cannot move player. Around. Everybody plays in his position. But if I have a team where every individual in my team could play two roles or three roles, then shuffling the team based on the competitor or based on the environment, it makes more sense. It makes it easier. It makes it more manageable and adaptable. And that is related to the structure and the roles and the responsibilities. Another thing is the governance decision making. Big organizations still have the mindset that we cannot buy a cup of water unless the CEO signs on it or a VP signs on it or seven people sign on it. In agile environments, we cannot wait that long for people to get involved to see what has happened and eventually agree or disagree. We need to be more agile. So empowerment should happen. And organizational leaders should understand and have a mindset and a culture of, if you want agility in your organization, then you have to let go of certain decisions. You cannot decide on everything. You have to distribute. You have to empower your teams so that they, they can take some or most of these decisions. So this is in the form of the structure. If we go to the processes, processes needs to be lightweight. Processes needs to be uh, quickly changing and adaptive. We shouldn't spend years planning. So we should have a small planning and a small execution. Um, performance management should be built in the processes. We cannot wait one year so that at the end of the one year to do performance appraisals for employees, to understand which employee is performing or which employee is not performing. It's a long time in agility. We need to find quicker ways of understanding in my team who is the individual who is performing versus who is the individual not delivering performance and what I need to do. More training, coaching, support, mentoring, or no, we need to find a replacement with, for this employee. So uh, our processes need to be light, need to be adaptive. And then technology helps. Definitely technology helps implementing agility, uh, supporting tools, virtual environment, communication, uh, tools that we can manage agile environment like online Kanban tools or online uh, agile project management, planning and communication tools help into implementing agility. So far so good guys. Any more Q and A? So far, so good. Anybody have a question? Please shoot. It will give me a time also to take a breath. <laughs> All right. So let's move on. Next, uh, Mackenzie and Co have put a uh, a model. Uh, they call it the operating model, a blueprint. If you want to convert your organization into an agile organization, it starts with value. It starts with the mindset. The mindset is the first. First, you establish the value, the mindset, the way people think about agile. Then you think about the structure and the teams and the backbone and the roadmap. Before, before, before you even implement agile, everybody in the organization should understand what is agile, what's the benefit of HR, why we're implementing HR and how we should change our ways of thinking, how we should change our mindset, how we should think about value before we even implement HR. Because if you built on a wrong mindset, set of tools and structures, it will not work. It will not work. Organization needs to establish. They need to do awareness sessions. They need to inform their teams. They need to explain to them what is the benefit of HR. Why agile? What's the different way of working? Why we're going to work in this way? Okay. Before we even go into thinking about how we're going to structure, how we're going to create agile teams, or, you know, what is our people, backbone, technology processes will be changed in order to adapt agile. So having said that, that's where we start. That's why the mindset is so important. I have a small video 
uh, from an organization, from a bank, who implemented uh, agile ways of working. Let's watch it and then we comment on it. Our world is changing quickly. New technology. Can you confirm that you can hear it? The voice? Yes. yes. All right. It's possible tomorrow is what we can't even imagine today, and people have become accustomed to this rapid pace of change. As a company, it means that you need to adapt continuously to meet shifting customer demands and embrace new possibilities. More and more of our clients contact us primarily online or via their mobile phones. They expect the same experience whether they contact us over the phone, by chat, or in one of our branches. Until 2015, ING worked according to classical structures and hierarchy. It has some advantages, but it doesn't work in an age of fintechs, big data, and hyper-connectivity. Something has to change. With a desire to innovate and new customer needs and experiences as our starting point, and inspiration from digital innovators like Spotify, Google, and Netflix, ING became the first bank in the world to adopt the agile way of working. And if you truly embrace the agile way of working as an organization, you say goodbye to trusted structures. It's a bold move. Your goals change, and so do your way of managing and organizing. Your values change, and you communicate differently. Agile working is a mindset. You don't act agile, you are agile. You need to trust people, take responsibility, and make things happen. This creates a healthy and involved workforce that shows initiative and is prepared for change. So, how do we achieve this? We work in squads, small autonomous teams with end-to-end -end responsibility for their own customer-related purpose. Our squads consist of different disciplines, customer journey experts, data analysts, IT developers, and UX designers. The product owner oversees the squad's work and takes responsibility for the output. Agile coaches secure the squad's culture, skills, and way of working to ensure they operate as a high-performing team. Squad members share expertise and develop their craftsmanship within a particular chapter. For example, the data analysis chapter or product management process chapter. The chapter lead secures the personal development of the chapter members and helps define how to get a job done. And how do we achieve cohesion between squads? That's where tribes come in, a set of squads with a related purpose. For example, we have the service tribe daily banking and the service tribe mortgages. This agile way of working empowers us to adapt readily to changing consumer needs and feedback. It makes us faster and more innovative. And most importantly, it makes us more attractive to customers and employees. What does or does not work is a matter of trial and error. Agile working lives up to its name. Nothing is carved in stone. That's the essence of our way of working for ING. We are already agile in the Netherlands. Now, we're rolling out our new mindset globally. So, that was an example how an organization like a bank, which is traditionally, it's not an IT industry, it's not a software development, implemented agility by embracing the new mindset of agility. In order to understand this mindset, what mindset should have? First, we should look at the principles of the Agile Manifesto. If you look at the 12 principles of Agile Manifesto, which eventually was created to the software teams, to the development teams, but now we're, got, we're, we're implementing it outside. Number one, early delivery of the product. We want to deliver value as early as possible. When, I, when, we, say not, when we say early, it doesn't mean that fast. It means in chunks. We take a big project and chop it into smaller pieces, and then we deliver in piece, and each piece will deliver value. And thus, we are able to deliver value faster, smaller value, but it's still a value rather than waiting months for the entire product. Number two, adaptability. 
and adaptability to the ever-changing working environment. Number three, frequent delivery. This smaller uh, sprints or smaller uh, 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 outputs will enable us to frequently deliver, which means what? Which means the customer can see our quality, which means the customer see how professional we are or not, which means the customer could minimize risk because if we're not doing something good, after two weeks, he will realize he's not working with the right vendor or the company and he could stop his work rather than spending his money and his millions. And then after several years, realizing he has chosen the wrong uh, uh, a vendor where he didn't, he, he, they will not be able to deliver the result. Number four, business and developers coordination. The ever coordination of the development team or the you know, production team or whoever doing the project with the business or the customer. This customer collaboration, working with the customer, that's, that's one of the most important uh, facts. You know, the collaboration that we have is one of the important facts, the focus on the customer, the focus on the need. Customer collaboration, customer satisfaction is a top priority. Motivated individual. We, the job of the agile coach is to motivate his individuals towards success. And motivation doesn't come just by implementing a set of tools. It comes by uh, creating a good environment to work, by creating a, a set of uh, a, 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 a culture of uh, respect, a culture of uh, support and collaboration within the team, a culture of accountability where somebody is accountable for his own, you know, uh, a culture of learning and improvement and continuous learning and improvement, but most important, respect respecting other team members, respecting the need of the customers, respecting the vendors and suppliers and the uh, stakeholders. And with that respect, with that collaboration, with the accountability, with the transparency, with the uh, uh, trust comes the mindset of HR. Number six, face-to-face -face interaction as much as possible for better collaboration and communication. Working software or working product is the best way to see progress. We don't believe in progress in percentages or reports. We believe in progress based on what has been really done, what is working, not in a PowerPoint presentation, actually working. We can demo it. We can test it. We can try it. Maintaining a constant pace. It means every week in, week out, delivering an output, a constant pace of delivery. And that constant pace could last forever as long as we are able to deliver. Technical brilliance, focus on technical excellence. Simplicity, why simplicity? Because why do we want to complicate things? If we have a few weeks to, to do it, then you know there is a power in simplicity. There's a power in making sure we simplify our processes so that we don't overcomplicate our processes, so that we don't get lost in the overcomplications. Uh, teams are self-organized. Teams learn within the self-organization. Uh, I don't need a manager on top of the teams. The team can uh, have, uh, uh, they are empowered to do the work. They're self-organized. They're shared accountability. And last, regular refraction and adjustment. As part of every agile framework or methodology, there is a stage in the process where we stop we look back at our last sprint or iteration or the last one week or two weeks and we say, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? And how should we proceed going further? Not me as an agile coach. The team reflects within the team themselves. And you can learn valuable lessons of where did you fail and what you need to do so that you don't fail again or what was your success point so that you continue and build on that. Questions. So to sum it up, agility needs a mindset. Without the mindset, all the tools, all the techniques, all the structure, all the processes doesn't work. The mindset starts with transparency. The mindset starts with embracing the change understanding that change is part of the process rather than trying to predict and stop the change. Understanding and embracing that customer needs and the customer itself is our top priority. And we're gonna work with the customer, not as a buyer-seller relationship, 
but as a partner relationship. Creating working deliverables rather than just creating reports uh, and gradually improving or keep adding to it. Building projects around motivated individuals and teams. Because if our project is built on based on individuals, they don't care, they're not motivated, they're des- we're not going to achieve you know, success. The team itself drives the success. Uh, the best measure of success is how much the product is working, aiming for a sustainable pace, simplifying things, while ensuring quality and technical uh, excellence, and organizing our teams in a way that they don't need me as an agent coach. They need themselves. They can rely on themselves because they trust themselves. They are transparent. They collaborate with each other. And if a team member does not understand these concepts, it means he doesn't have the agile mindset. Every agile individual needs to understand the values of transparency, the value of trust, the value of collaboration, the value of working together and supporting each other because we have a shared accountability for success. That's it for me. Looking forward for your questions. Right. Thank you, Viken. Uh, I have one question on my side. Uh, when you talked about uh, the blueprint, and I can see uh, uh, blueprint of uh, agile transformation. Yes. Um, what's the first step toward? Uh, 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 okay, now we understand value. Then uh, we go to the structure, and uh, I can see it's uh, like a structure, then agile teams, then backbone and roadmap. Um, but I can see the the loop around uh, each uh, topic. Sure. So, uh, you always come back and find ways of improvement. Agility works with experimentation. So if you created a structure, it doesn't mean that's the best structure. So you create a structure, you go and do it, and then you realize, oh, we have gaps in the structure. You come back and you improve the structure. You know, okay. but the value does not change because. Uh, the mindset and the value you put it first. You understand your goals. You understand the value. You understand where you want the team to go, how you want the team to go, and then the structure and the teams and the backbone support that. You know that movement. Uh, that's why there is there is the arrows because we test something. It doesn't work. We go back. We change. We test it again. It doesn't work. We improve and and so on. Okay. So um, uh, when when you uh, start working on the structure, then you. You try an experiment, and then uh, you will work on the agile teams and uh, get some feedback from uh, what you already did to adapt. Yeah, to the agile teams could realize that the structure and the decision making is slowing us down. So you go back to the structure and you change the decision making process, or who reports to who, or how decisions are taken, and then you go back and you do another sprint and you see if this is better or not. Okay. We didn't have the time to actually go into the details of this operating model because the objective of this session is the mindset and not, you know, the agile process. I'm sure in the other lectures, uh, you guys have discussed about how agile works, but my focus was how the mindset of agile is as important, if not more important, the process or the methodologies, or if you apply Scrum or no, or if you use a product backlog or no. If the team or the work, people working in the organization that were transforming them to agility, they don't have the agile mindset, everything else will not work. Absolutely. So you, you start with the mindset before you go to the structure or the backbone or the tools or the whatever you want to do it. How, how do you uh, make the top management uh, commit to this mindset? That's- that's the most difficult uh, job when we go to organizations and we try to convince top management that you need to be agile for years they used to you know say we've been successful for 70 years why now we want to change the way of working till covid came and they were re- they realized oh now we should have we should have adapted earlier now maybe it's too late and please now come back and help us become agile 
Uh, so it's not easy to convince an organization, which they were doing business for several years, they have so many branches and employees and they have success. So when, when organizations have success, they do not see the value of being ready for the change because they're successful. They're making their profits, they're making the money. They don't realize why do we need another mechanism, another way of working when our way of working is actually profitable. And this is in their lack of ability to see that we have now uh, reached a more, we call it a VUCA word, a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous word where things are not stable. Things could change overnight. And if an organization cannot adapt as quickly, they will go out. Okay, so the easiest you. way to do this is to take a small department in one organization, implement in it, the agility from the value to the structure to the teams and backbones and show senior management or the corporate of the organization look we've implemented it here how it's working let's you know diversify this in the video of the ing they have implemented it in the netherlands before implementing it worldwide because they want to see if this thing work can we convince the management let's do it in one country let's do it in one branch let's do it in one location show the management success, show management importance, show management value, and then it's easier for the management to adopt if they see what is agility rather than just talking about it. Thank you very much. Sure. Anyone it's else? Nice we have a couple of minutes, uh, so don't hesitate. Feel free to ask any questions about uh, agile mindset. Now is the time. All right, guys. If no question, then that's it for me. Uh, it was a pleasure at being part of uh, today's discussion. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Thank you so much uh, for me being part of this uh, conference. I salute everyone. Thank you guys. Hope to see Thank you around. Thank you very much. We can see you, see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.